I didn't prepare a speech because I wanted to hear what these gentlemen had to say um, because, um, but I, I thought that I would tell you a story of something that just happened to me today. At 1.30 today, I got a phone call from my father, um, Harad Hovnanian, who many of you know, who made a decision 16 months ago to move m my mother and himself at 82 permanently to Armenia. We've seen, seen them two weeks in America since then, and I can say they've never been happier. And he calls me what is effectively 10 o'clock at night in Armenia and says, we had the most wonderful evening and we have to share it with you. And I was like, okay, Dad, but I'm in a meeting full of people. And he says, um, well, I just had to share it with you. We went to the most amazing play. Your mother cried for an hour and a half. She was so moved. And now we're at dinner, and Nuna Yasayan is singing She's. And I'm here with Madeline Manasyan, who is an LA Armenian, a friend of mine, who at a very young age decided to move to Armenia and now is uh, married to an Armenian and has three sons. Um, and he said, it's just one of those wonderful, sp spectacular Armenian nights. And I thought, wow, you know, it really was an, uh, the words I needed to hear to remind myself of why I agreed to come here, which was that, you know, I'm not an apologist for the country. Do I think that the tax and the court system stink? Absolutely, okay? Do I think that there's room for improvement? Absolutely. But I think that the Armenia um, that we have is the Armenian that we need to engage in. And we need to engage in, in things like this, but we also need to engage in a way that reminds us of why we need to love Armenia, because um, that's what's going to keep your children inspired, and that's what's going to uh, make me believe that the future will be better. Um, I'm not an apologist, but I do um, believe that 20 years for a country is a very short period of time. And when Armenia was first formed, and a lot of people were critical because Armenia, Armenians were thinking so differently than we as Westerners were, Arda said something that I'll never forget, which, which is that she said, you know, we as Armenians are very poor at knowing American history. And if we were around when America had, was on its, on its 20th anniversary, we would be shocked at, you know, some of the people that we now hero worship you know, we're, we're the robber barons who, you know, we were vilified then. So again, I'm not making an excuse. I definitely think um, we need to have these discussions, but I also need, think that we need to be, have perspective. I think that we are realistic of an, enough to recognize that the days of being shocked that there are bad things about Armenia are over. Um, and I think that we're much more pragmatic today than we were right after the earthquake. Um, the, um, I agree very much with Razmi in that, you know, I went to a number of the diasporan conferences and, you know, they were Chinese water torture because you truly felt that, you know, they were just giving you a forum to speak but that they really didn't care whether or not something was accomplished. I truly believe that uh, even though there are a number of well-intentioned people in the mis Ministry of Diaspora, that in the scope of all of the challenges that Armenia has, they don't take it seriously. They don't take it seriously for a number of reasons, mo most of which I believe is our fault. But I believe that we re have to recognize, as Razmik said, that the diaspora is very unique, not just because of the newcomers and the, the people that are f from, um, you know, from historic Armenia, but also because of the um, geographic diversity. Through, you know, I work with land and culture for 20 years, and I dealt a lot with the French Armenians and the British Armenians, and I was amazed at how different we are. And it was, you know, I never felt as American as I felt when I was sitting with a French Armenian. Um, and so, you know, and Armenia sees all of us coming, you know, for our one-week trips and giving our opinions of how we do it in the West or how we do it in Paris or how we do it in London or how we do it in Germany. And so, and, you know, their heads, you know, spin and, you know, they have naturally leaned toward Russia. And I agree with Rosman, that is probably where the future center of the spoke of the diaspora will end up. And that's kind of sad for us because, you know, I've dealt enough with Russian Armenians that they're, 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 they're very different from us. And, you know, they also are a fairly new nation. And so they have a hard time understanding us and we will have a hard time understanding them. And it will be many generations before, um, before we're, I believe that we'll be able to, to view the world and the future of Armenia in the same way. Um, so, uh, as far as um, you know, the, the, the protocols and, and the running of Armenia and should we have a voice, um, I'm going to be controversial here and say um, 
I don't think so, okay? Um, I have a choice. Do I want to move to Armenia and have a voice? I have that choice. I've chosen not to. Um, maybe I'll move, hopefully sooner than my parents move there. Um, but until then, I, I question whether or not we as a diaspora, and, and again, the diaspora, perhaps if it had a unified voice, um, would be heard. But it doesn't have a unified voice. It de definitely has d um, different in interests, and the organiz institutional organizations we have um, aren't relevant to what Armenia is focused on. And so um, for me, I just basically see it as a situation where we should have these forums so we're realistic, we're aware, we show the diaspora they care. I mean, I know that the embassy is very aware of this lecture, okay, there's no doubt in my mind, and it's good for them to know that we're not lambs and we're not just going to just blindly give to the Armenian Fund when there's a telethon or whatever the case may be. But in the end of the day, I, I think that you know, the solution that I can find for Armenia is probably in the world, uh, words of one of our friends, uh, James Tufankin, and I tell, I'll, I'll end with a story here, which was, he's a successful businessman in New York. It's 1993-94, you know, Armenia, as many of you know, was horrible then. And every time I got on a plane, and I was, I was doing a lot of prep work for LCO at the time, and it would be February, and we, he and I would find each other in the back of the plane, and I'd say, James, why are you going to Armenia? He says, oh, I'm going this, uh, this week to count sheep. And I was like, okay. And like six months later, I'd be in the back of the plane, I'd see James again. I said, James, why are you going to Armenia this time? He says, oh, well, you know, this time I'm going to test the quality of wool. And, you know, and it would happen over and over. And this time I'm going to, to meet dying, different dying people in villages. And this man for years invested his personal time to get on a plane and study the wool rug making factory. You know, although he was an extremely successful person, could have sent someone else and ultimately invested uh, successfully into a massive rug production uh, business in the West. Um, and so, you know, he inspires me when people say, well, how can we engage in Ar Armenia? And I say, well, you know, you do, on whatever scale you can, you do what James did, which is you focus on the one thing within the spectrum of being Armenian that you feel the most passionate about. Is it schools? Is it hospitals? You know, you go to Armenia and you find that one hospital that inspires you and you work with them. And you never do what we would never do in America. We would never walk into a school and just hand them a check. Um, you know, I, the story of Carolyn Najarian, who's a very dear friend, she trusted someone and the man absolutely ripped her off. It was a horrible story. And we lost the inspiration of a woman that truly was at the forefront of helping us improve the healthcare system in Armenia. And that's sad and it's never retrievable. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have a responsibility to use our American wisdom when we go to Armenia and not lead by the hearts. And whatever we do, do it the same way we would do it in, in America. Okay? Trust but verify. Don't give power of his attorneys blindly to people. Um, you know, and just, you know, look in the eyes of the people that you're asking to be a partner in helping improve whatever little thing that you can help improve, and you will get a great level of satisfaction. The court systems, the tax systems, the lack of rule of law, those things will come. I believe it, but I believe it will, will not come from us. It will come from the day that, that every Ar Armenian in Armenia has a job. Their children have an opportunity for a good education. The healthcare system is, is, is not uh, expensive and is quality. And when their stomachs are full, I believe they will rise up. We've seen examples of that in, in other countries. And I believe that Armenia right now, the reason that the, the populace is not engaged as they should be, as we want them to be, is because they have so many issues within themselves that they need to deal with and so many priorities. And so, and they, and nothing will happen until they are a partner of that change. That doesn't mean we don't have these discussions. It doesn't mean we don't engage. It doesn't mean we don't care, okay? It doesn't mean that we don't tell the government that we're not happy with the way things are. But at the end of the day, it is the country we have. It's still a young infant in the, in the, in the lifetime of a country. Um, and we may not see the ideal Armenia that we dream of. Your children may not see it. Um, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm committed to it in the lifetime that I have. Um, and I hope that each and every one of you, even though there are, the tone of this 
presentation may go negative. I, I hope it doesn't, but if it does, I truly hope that most of you understand that at the end of the day, there's nothing better and more fulfilling in this short life that we have than being a part of that great country.